Okay. Um, hi Ben, thank you very much for, uh, for talking to us. You're welcome. The first thing I wanted to ask you was just, I've read on your website, on the Scarlet's website, your bio. Could you just give a little synopsis of how you came to, to get involved in cooking and, and be here? Uh, get involved in cooking, because um, I got no qualifications when I finished school. How did I end up here? Um, I was selling my restaurant at the end of 2007, beginning of 2008. And, That's the uh, Abbey. That was the Abbey in Penzance. And uh, I had a letter from one of the directors suggesting that they thought I might be looking for a new challenge. They were about to build a hotel. Would I like to come and have a chat? And the rest, as they say, is history. And you were looking to do that rather than buy another place in your own? No, no, I was, I was on the brink of uh, buying a 15 bedroom hotel on the outskirts of Falmouth. Um, it was the second hotel we, were ne we nearly bought. Um, and the deal was going on for about six months through middle of June, middle of 2007 through to the end of 2007 and uh, I was borrowing a stupid amount of money to do it and everyone was like, what are you doing? Are you mad? And I was like, no, I'm a good chef, you know, I need to, I need to get something with some bedrooms so I can actually start making some money and um, yeah. I didn't have a problem with the amount of money we were borrowing but increasing as time went on and the recession started to loom large and, you know, it was like actually maybe now's not the time to borrow all this money so we pulled out of that, that's my wife and I. <coughs> So this came up at the right time, is it? And this did come up at the right time, yeah, it was perfect time. Yeah. Now, now on your, on somewhere on one of the interviews I've read, you said you're not necessarily after accolades, but obviously at the same time you had a Michelin star at the Abbey. Yeah. Would you love to have the same here, or are you not really interested in that? I don't really care, to be honest. I didn't set out for one. Um, I'm a firm believer that a high proportion of the people who think they can get that, that kind of accolade will never attain it. Um, I, I'm about trying to do... I live my life by the ethos that you do unto others as you have done to yourself. So in terms of the way I work, I cook food that I'd be happy to, to eat myself, you know, and, and I try and teach my team the same thing. You know, if you were out paying your hard-earned cash for a meal in someone's restaurant and they serve what you're about to serve, would you be happy with it? The answer is yes. Fine, you're doing a good job. Carry on. Um, so I just try and do the best I can to, to basically put a smile on people's faces to make them happy. Cheers, Pete, you're a star. And, um, Ooh, pretty, with a leaf on top of everything. Isn't it fantastic, yeah. And, um, you know, to have had a star for the six or seven years I have run at the restaurant, it still, still really sends a tingle down my spine, thinking about it. Um, are you, have you got any of those staff from there that have followed you here? No, it's a bit too far. I mean, it was a two-chef kitchen. The Abbey oh, was a two-chef kitchen. This is a much bigger kitchen. Um, and my second chef at the Abbey, he now runs a pub down in Penzance. Oh, and so, what about in terms of suppliers? Because Cornwall's got to be one of the best places to get British produce. Yeah. Are there any particular ones that you can tell me about or anything that you particularly yeah. enjoy? Yeah. Um, all of them. I have a good relationship with nearly all of my suppliers. All of my suppliers. Do you choose um, them yourselves? I mean, have you gone out and looked for them? And these, uh, in some cases, they're people I've worked with in the past. Um, that logistically makes life a little difficult because they're small farms that don't deliver, so I pick things up. Um, there are a couple of other small growers that supply me with things. In fact, there's about three small growers that I use for salads and herbs and vegetables and fruit in season. Um, my fish I buy from a couple of uh, different fishmongers, predominantly buying fish that's caught around the southwest, so whether that's Brixham, Newlyn, Lou, Plymouth, you know, it's generally all southwest fish. Um, is that the same for most of your produce at southwest or is, is some of it further afield in Britain? Uh, it's pretty much as much as possible southwest because I'm on a bigger scale than I was when I had the restaurant. Mm. I have to look slightly farther afield. <coughs> And, you know, for me, the important thing is seasonality um, and uh, provenance, you know, I, I, where possible, I want to buy it from someone who's grown it, not some middleman who's making his little cut on it, you know, I want to have a relationship with the person who's out tending the field, who gives a stuff, who gives a toss about what they're doing, like I give a toss about what I'm doing, you know, and I, I think that, that synergy, that link, uh, is vitally important. Um, my butcher is a small family butcher on the outskirts of Red Ruth, so 20 miles from here. Nearly all of the meat that he supplies me is from around him, you know, from farms around where he is. So as much as possible, it's local. Nearly always, I'm careful to say without exception, it's seasonal. Um, but for me, 
ultimately local now spreads across the channel because you know if you think about it is it is it any worse to get something across from France than it is to get something down from the north of the country mm, yeah. no you know with our ethos it's about um, the way the, pro the, the, the any produce that we buy from farther afield it's about the way it gets to us you know we won't the example, and I'm sure you noticed this morning, we offer apple juice for breakfast, and uh, that's a locally produced apple juice. Will we do orange juice? Yes, when we can buy Spanish oranges. Will we fly Florida oranges in? No, we won't. And that's kind of the way we, we work it, you know. And I'm not perfect, and I get things wrong. And I try and, you know, I try and let my suppliers, you know, for example, the one vegetable wholesaler I use, he's probably the only person I would have to worry about in terms of provenance of produce. He's aware of our ethos and he tries his best to, to honour that. But, you know, he's got different people picking the orders on different days. Tommy doesn't know that Ben won't take chili and onions, he only wants Spanish. Yeah, it's okay, get stuff that's not but then it goes back, you know, and yeah. I mean, ultimately, um, I'm a firm believer in the fact that I'm a human being. I'll make mistakes and I'm not going to beat myself up. But the idea them. is what you're aiming at. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And are there, um, what's your favourite dish to cook at this time of year, given that we're talking about seasonality? Is um, there anything particularly that you I'm not someone make? who does signature dishes. Um, I might do something, might, might be someone on the menu that you guys ate last night that I might never ever cook again. You know, it's just as the mood takes me. Okay. Um, I got there at eight this morning. Um, I've written the lunch menu, I've written the dinner menu, which I've written to the fishmonger. Um, um, the guys are now set, ready to go. Um, you'll see tonight when you eat that at least 50% of the starters are changed. Uh, pretty much all the main courses are changing, albeit the species of fish might f feature, but they'll be a different, be cooked a different way tonight with a different garnish. Yeah. And what um, do you want your diners to go away with then when they, when they leave? Uh, as it says on the website, uh, a smile on their face and a warm feeling in their belly. Uh, um, that's far more important to me. About that is far more important to me than whether I get a mission star, mm -hmm. you know, or whether the AA um, you know, give me two or three rosettes. They're just a byproduct of what I do. It was, you know, don't get me wrong. To have had a start at the restaurant was absolutely phenomenal, um, and it really does. You know, it's something to something to be proud of. For Christ's sake, how many chefs ever do? Does it that? make a difference in terms of visitors? either types of visitors or how many you get or anything like that or not massively? Depends where you are in the country I think. Yeah. Yeah. My experience of Michelin stars is only very early on in my career and then the one that I had at the restaurant mm. um, and my personal experience was that in a place like Penzance if you have a Michelin star you're thought of as posh and expensive <laughs> and outside of the summer months when we've got visitors it was exceedingly difficult. Yeah. Mm. Fab, thank you very much. You're welcome.